Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's second week of online worship. I'm Karen Neighbor, one of the lay ministers here at St. Matthew. Pastor Hugo and Will went to Memphis for spring break to bring Brenda home. And in pastor's absence, we are pleased to welcome back Pastor Keith Brutlog to deliver our message today. Two announcements before we begin our worship. First, with the governor's stay-at-home order, which is in effect until April 10th, we will be holding online worship again next Sunday at 10.45 a.m. Secondly, although we are not worshiping face-to-face, -face, we'd like to give you a reminder that as the Spirit leads you to please continue to give your weekly offerings by donating online through the Give Plus system or by sending your offering in through the mail. For details on how the Give Plus system works, you can go to the St. Matthew website and follow the directions there. We know that these are uncertain times for many of us, but God continues to bless us, and in response, we give back to him. Thank you for your continued support of St. Matthew and David's Daycare Learning Center and all of the ministry and staff during these difficult times. That's all of our announcements. Pastor B, would you please lead us in prayer? Well, good morning, church. Here we are with our worship uh, team, our whole uh, community sheltering in a safe place called the House of the Lord. If you could imagine that. And we take all the ambiance of this place and, and through, the, through the modern uh, technology, we're just going to hand it off to you and you can grab it and you can wrap yourself up in it and we invite you into the presence of the house of the Lord with these words. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul uses these words in every writing in his, of his New Testament writing. They have a special meaning. They communicate to each one of us the comfort that the grace of God rests securely in our heart and life. And also with that, it brings the kingdom of grace into our very lives, and where the kingdom of grace is, the kingdom of Satan cannot be. And he has to, he has to vacate that space. And in our lives at, in this time, we say to one another, and you say it with me, please, I'll count it down, four, three, Two, one. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us with grace and peace from the Lord Jesus Christ, from God our Father. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And we sing. <laughs>
we gather today celebrating life, life created by the Father, life, life restored by Jesus Christ, the life of all the living, who is in the resurrection and the life. Life sanctified by the living breath of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We take time for confession of our sins. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. We come before our Lord, confessing our sins and seeking his forgiveness. The Apostle Paul has called us to live life through the Spirit, not according to the flesh. We confess we have not put to death the things of the flesh and have sinned against you by what we have done and left undone. We have not darkened the earth as ourselves. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. And now hear the good news. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin, from all sin. We're under the blood of of the Lamb. It is my duty, my pleasure, and delight as your servant in the Word today to declare to each one of you that our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God's people all over say, Amen. Amen. The lessons for this last Sunday of Lent foreshadow Holy Week. The Romans passage declares, in Christ we are set free from the law of sin and death. And the same sovereign Lord tells Ezekiel, I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. Also assures Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Holy Week reminds us that nothing bad in life is ever the evidence of God's absence. Instead, into every evil of life, God brings grace and peace to those who are in Christ Jesus and through them into the world, desperate to hear good news. Listen for these Good Friday and Easter Sunday themes as we hear the lessons for the day. Our Old Testament lesson today is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, 
Come, breath from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson today is from Romans chapter 8. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their own minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. John chapter 11. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was 
two more days, and then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Any one who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. And after he said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus has, had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Mary heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus, he had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she had got up and went out, they followed her supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and said to him, and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more, deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and the cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Hello, I am Brenda Hugo, the Children's Ministries Director at St. Matthew Lutheran Church, and we welcome you to our children's message. This morning, I brought with me a tissue, and we know what we can use a tissue for, and these days of the coronavirus stuff, you use a tissue to blow your nose or cough, and then you throw it away. Or if a tissue doesn't have lotion in it, you could use it to clean your glasses. Or another use for the tissue is to dry your tears if you're so sad, you're sad. Which, which brings us to our gospel lesson today where Jesus encounters Mary and Martha and Lazarus has died and he's in the tomb and we encounter our shortest verse in the Bible which is Jesus wept. Now in those days they don't have paper tissues like this but, but it, it goes to show that Jesus cared about Mary and Martha and Lazarus and he wept, he cried, he cared deeply and he rose Lazarus from the dead. That was an amazing thing. Those bones that were laying four days already in the tomb, Jesus brought out alive and well because Jesus cared. We jump to our Old Testament lesson and, and we have Ezekiel standing in a valley of, of dry bones, all sorts of men and probably women, people who have died in battle, those, those they're bo just bones left, scattered in the valley. And God talked to Ezekiel and, and he cared deeply for Ezekiel and the Israelites and for those bones. And, and he told Ezekiel that, uh, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, God, only you know. God breathed and, and the bones came together and muscle came onto them and skin came onto them and, and they rose up alive and well with God's breath in them, a great army. God cared for Ezekiel and those bones. So that reminds me, there's a song you get to sing with me today about Ezekiel and some dry bones. Now it's not an anatomically correct song per se. You can throw that into a science lesson and at home and figure out what's what, but, uh, but uh, you can Google it and uh, check out some of the different versions of the song. But if you'd like to sing and dance along with this one with me today, feel free. All right. Ezekiel cried down dry bones, Ezekiel cried down dry bones, Ezekiel cried down dry bones, now hear the word of the Lord. The toe bones connect to the foot bone, the foot bone connect to the heel bone, the heel bone connected to the leg bone, the leg bone connected to the knee bone, the knee bone connected to the thigh bone, the thigh bone connected to the hip bone, the hip bone connected to the backbone, the backbone connected to the shoulder bone, the shoulder bone connected to the neck bone, the neck bone connected to the head bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, gum bones, gonna walk around them bones, them bones, gonna walk around them bones, gum bones, gonna walk around. Now hear the word of the Lord. God cared for Ezekiel. God cared for all the people that rose up in the valley of the dry bones. God cared for Mary and for Martha and for Lazarus. God cares for you too. He cares so much that he went to the cross to suffer and die so that when you die someday, it's not the end. God will raise you up with him in the last day. He cares, he loves you, amen.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. As we uh, reminded ourselves at the top of the service, grace and peace brings the kingdom of God into our very being, to live there and dwell there securely. We're under the blood of the Lamb. We're safe and secure from the enemy's plan. No weapon formed against me will stand, for we are under the blood of the Lamb. And where the kingdom of God is, Satan's kingdom cannot be. And so he's gone. And we have grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. On this, the last Sunday of our Advent, of our, excuse me, this is Lent. We're wrapping it up. Lent, that beautiful time, the, the celebration of, uh, of the passion of Christ, our preparing ourselves for the celebration of, on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. To, to come up close and personal to the, what it means for Christ to have lived a perfect life in our place, to die that innocent death on the cross for the forgiveness of all of our sins, and to see that open tomb that was the shot that, that moved the gospel across all the millennia so that you and I are believers today in this crazy, mixed-up world and so we look forward to the celebration of Holy Week, looking forward to Good Friday, looking forward to Easter Sunday. However that's going to be celebrated, we will celebrate it with joy and thanksgiving. These are interesting times, aren't they? That's one way to describe it. Uh, I listen for how it is described words that, uh, that have a connection to me. Yesterday, I heard uh, someone say, this is, these are troubling times. And again, and then I heard someone say, uh, these are worrisome times. Um, there's this thing called COVID-19, and there's an economy that is concerning a lot of people, and and personal finances, and jobs, and all of this. And in the midst of that, fear is prevalent. In fact, what I'm seeing is that fear is stoked, sometimes even intentionally. You can't let a good thing go to waste, you know. And then, in the midst of the voices of calm, and I'm so grateful for the voices of calm that I'm hearing, I'm also hearing some really crazy voices. Someone has said, I read it anyway, that uh, if one thing goes wrong, we rage at God. If two, three, or more things go bad, we just rage at each other. And there's plenty of rage. And it's all indicative that this is an evil world, an evil world. But these are also times of opportunity for people who live and hear the words, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we know, we know this, that fear in any form is never the evidence of God's absence. We know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we, we see and we hear the wisdom of God proclaimed to us from, a, from, the, from the cross on which our Savior died and from the empty tomb that leads us into the world knowing the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Tanner Olson is a grace and peace person. He is a uh, poet and a writer, and he, as this poet speaks, and he does in many churches and like our national youth gatherings and so on, he invites his uh, people who are hearing him to inhale God's grace and exhale his peace. I've been doing that. 
I've been... And I invite you with me to inhale God's grace. And exhale his peace. Have it permeate every, every cell of our body. One more time. And because we're, we are Trinitarian, we have to do it three times. There's a little part of me that's touchy-feely, and that part of me enjoyed this. But I would guess there are some folks who are saying, what did I just do? Inhaling God's grace, exhaling his peace is the normal ritual of life, which reminds us of grace and peace comes to us from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We can teach it this way. The Romans passage had this phrase. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You could say it this way. From this time forward and forever, God has shut the door on a guilty verdict deserving death for those who are in Christ Jesus. No Condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Paul uses this phrase over 80 times in his writing. 20 plus times in the first chapter of Ephesians. Here's the first one from chapter, from chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Next verse has the same thing. For he chose us in him from before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. And in verse 7 he says, In him, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. The old has passed away. There is no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And the new has come. The verdict is justified, not guilty. And the gift is life in Christ. We can say it. I am not guilty. I have life in Christ forever. Forever. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are at, and if you are with someone, look at that person and say with me, counting down, four, three, two, one, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan is gone, and the kingdom of grace rests and reigns in our heart and life. Grace. I want to teach on that just briefly. My working definition of grace is this, that God leans toward us in Christ because he wants to bless us. Leaning toward us. That's the nature of God. Because in Christ, he wants to bless us with a perfect life, an innocent death, and a glorious resurrection for our life of service to him on this earth. We teach the means of grace as Lutherans. That God comes to us in Bible, baptism, and the Lord's Supper. And the first action of the means of grace is to bring us to the to the awareness of our sinfulness. Lovingly bringing us to confession and absolution and drawing us through the cross, taking away our sins. And the second action of the grace of God is 
full forgiveness and life restored as children of the kingdom. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then this word peace. Here's how I work with it. It is God's gift of wholeness. And it is accompanied by quietness and rest. Peace is not the absence of COVID. It's not the, it's not the inclusion of a, of a vibrant economy. It's, it's not the health of our personal finances, but it is the peace of God that passes all understanding and it keeps our hearts and minds centered in God's love to us in Christ Jesus. Say it again, four, three, two, one. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So what does this mean for me? And if it means something for me, it means something for you. God leads me daily, deeply into his word. Beginning with myself and Pastor Hugo, we hound you into the word of God. We we get you there any way we can. And then daily into our world, because We are people who are to be known by love, to live by faith, and be voices of hope in this crazy, mixed-up world. Said another way, daily inhaling God's grace, exhaling his peace. One more time, huh? Get that kinesthetic going in you. For me to purposefully engage the covenant of baptism that God has made with me. Daily putting all my pet sins to death. All of them, painful as it might be, putting them to death so that a new person can arise and live with God. Known by love, live by faith, being a voice of hope. And if you don't know your pet sins, I, I think somebody in your family, there'd be some who would who'd be happy to point them out to you. And, and then there may be those in your family who would thoughtfully and carefully and lovingly share at least one or two with you. Because the covenant of baptism is that gift of God by which grace and peace from God our Father through Jesus Christ our Lord comes to us. And then we pray for, we identify those ones in our life, those ones. Someone has said what God wants done for all, he wants done for one. And God has put at least one, one, into your life, maybe two ones or three ones or four. I don't know how many, but there are those people in your life who right now need a phone call, a text, something, Facebook, so it would be eyeball to eyeball, so that you can communicate to them grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, inhale God's grace and live and exhale his peace day by day. One more time, four, three, two, one. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We go in that peace and we serve the Lord. And now uh, I want us to take a moment to uh, confess and affirm the faith in which uh, we were baptized and live. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. As he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers, uh, Betty Birkin is uh, home now. I'll bet you Wayne is really happy, and Betty as well. And we will be adding her to our prayers. Uh, Donna Stevens is in hospice care at her daughter Kim Robinson's house. Uh, Dorothy was chatting with uh, Kim yesterday, and um, uh, Kim asked that we include the, her in our prayers as well. And then each time that I'm uh, with you in worship, uh, there are a certain no, uh, some people that I just pray for automatically for healing They're in my daily prayers, and we include them here as well. We go to the Lord. Oh, then uh, each, each petitioner will end with, Lord, in your mercy, and hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come now to our aid. In the midst of all that is worrisome and troubling our world right now, we pray for your healing hand, a settling of hearts and lives with grace and peace. Lord, in your mercy, be with those who serve on the front line of people care at this time. We pray for their health and welfare, for the protective and therapeutic equipment they need, for clarity in decisions they make, for energy to push through fatigue, and for lives guided by your caring hand, Lord, in your mercy. As leaders of nations, and, and, and as leaders of nations, governors of states and regions, medical and economic advisors collaborate about decisions to be made moving forward. We ask for correct data, reliable models, and strategic foresight to make right decisions at the right time for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for those who serve you on many other fronts, our grocery store clerks, our hardware clerks. And today we thank you for those people from St. Matthew who will uh, present Meals to Wheels in homes this week. Keep them safe, keep them well in your protective hand. Lord, in your mercy. We rejoice, Lord, that Betty now, after a long time, is able to be home in her own bed, her own table, in her own house with her husband, Wayne, and family. And we commend her into your care and the continued healing that is to take place. Lord, in your mercy. We commend Donna Stevens into your hand. May those who serve her hospice care assure her of the peace that passes all understanding that keeps hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for safety and for healing for Michael, for Dana, for Dick, for Kim, and those we name in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy. We ask that you guide us to the one person, perhaps several ones, who most need to hear your assuring grace and peace at this time. And may we, we reach out to them. And may they, along with us, be known by love, live by faith, and be voices of hope in those places where we live and interact each day. Lord, in your mercy. And as you've taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be in the word. Be in the word. Hear it, read it, learn it, inwardly digest it to the glory of God and for the sake of his kingdom. We are wrapping up the, the individual verses of uh, patience this week, and we're moving into faithfulness just in time for the continuation of Holy Week. And now, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. God's people say, Amen. Amen.